My name is Dick Kreisberg, and I'm from Institute for Systems Biology in Seattle. Uh, I work for ILIA. And in particular, I'm a software engineer, so um, you won't be hearing any interesting cancer results from me. I'm, uh, this talk is more about our approaches to tool building, especially in the face of the challenges that TCGA data presents. So in this case, uh, I want to talk specifically about uh, visual analytics and how it pertains to the sorts of uh, problems that we face in our work. Uh, we have these large heterogeneous data sets, as Ilya uh, talked about earlier, and we look for ways, advantageous ways to explore this data. Uh, the goal is to allow a person who, who uses our tool to quickly formulate testable hypotheses about the relationships uh, between different parts of the data or, or even external parts of the data, such as pathways and outcome. Uh, and I'd like to say right away that, you know, there's many excellent tools uh, aside from ours and especially within the TCGA community. You have tools from places like UCSC and Broad and MSKCC. Uh, when we talk about visual analytics, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things to keep in mind. Um, a couple of them are, well, for instance, the first thing would be uh, how we encode the information. So uh, you, you might see in this slide, you know, there's, there's a lot of encoding going on. There's, there's color and shape and size and, and uh, annotation. Um, but the goal is that we want the user to be able to easily reason on what they're looking at. They want it, they, it needs to be as close to their mental model as possible so that they can, when they're performing these complex analyses and operations in the tool, uh, the, the abstraction isn't so high that they're, they're distracted by it. Uh, we also, in these tools, we want to manage the scale uh, so that when we're vi viewing the data, it's cognitively and visually manageable. We don't want to clutter it or, or overwhelm the user. Uh, and hopefully we can make it interactive so that the manipulation of the data allows the user to focus on, on the useful abstraction rather than uh, how they're actually manipulating the interface. Uh, we would like to annotate, so provide additional information on demand, not uh, upfront. Uh, information like metadata, research literature, uh, error estimates, and so forth. Uh, and then sort of the bigger uh, goals are we'd like to you know, connect the data to other sources and tools like the ones I mentioned before and place them nearby in the analysis and the visualization so that the user can gather you know, additional evidence uh, in support of, of their hypothesis. And of course, uh, at the end of the day, what you want to be able to do is share this uh, insight with others. So you want to be able to collaborate and distribute and collect you know, the different analyses and, and, and link them out to everyone else so that you can gather uh, more and more sort of uh, evidence. So quickly, the sorts of technologies that allow us to do this, um, you might call them emergent technologies. For us, the biggest one is the first one, the browser-based graphical rendering. So uh, in the tools that I'll be showing again, much like the one the demonstration Ilya gave, we use SVG where the browser is rendering the image directly, uh, but there's also Canvas and WebGL, which is a forthcoming standard that has, allows you to uh, accelerate the rendering on the graphical card while still being in the browser experience. There's also uh, cloud services that allow you to scale up your computation and your data management. Um, and then new types of databases called NoSQL, and those allow us to have adaptive data models. So often in TCGA, a new analysis uh, is born, and from it, a new data model is, is created. And it's hard in the uh, classical sense with SQL to integrate those models quickly the new SQL, uh, NoSQL uh, technologies allow us to do that on the fly. Also, graph databases, uh, they allow us in the same manner to be adaptive about the types of relationships that we declare exist between the data. And finally, graph computation is, is a new direction to go in where you can then reason upon 
the, the data, especially in our case, that's structured like a graph. Uh, and you can do this in a distributed manner across large uh, clusters of computers. So in this case, uh, we talk about uh, integrating data sources and then performing analysis, storing associations, bringing in other types of data, and in the end, visualizing it with tools. So in this one that I've highlighted, that's a screenshot of the circular view from Regular Explorer, the genome level view. And in my mind, there's another arrow that sort of points from uh, number five, the highlighted one, back to number one, because it's really an iterative process uh, where you know the results are understood and, and internalized and then the user proposes a new uh, data matrix to run the analysis on or a new analysis to run. So I'm not as brave as Ilya so I won't be doing a live demonstration. Uh, instead I've just got some screenshots so in this case it's uh, the, like I said before the genome level view and and this analysis is done with random forest uh, created by Timo Erkula, who'll be speaking tomorrow. And it portrays on around the periphery the, uh, the human chromosomes. And each node represents different feature types. So the colors describe whether it's uh, gene expression or methylation or copy number variation and so on. And as Ilya showed, you can bring up the raw data, uh, which is critical so for the user to be able to confirm or uh, possibly deny the, the association that the analysis uh, uh, gave. Uh, and I want to emphasize that the circular view is, is very much a high level 30,000 foot view of the data, right? There's no uh, particular one little insight that's just going to jump out by, by bringing up all these results. But it does allow the user to cognitively manage the, the data using uh, filtering tools like the one that's on the right side of the screen and to bring up the, the, uh, the data and iterate through it, paginate through it. Uh, so here's another tool. Uh, in this case, uh, the analysis uh, is a metric that measures aggressiveness of tumors in colorectal cancer. And you can see on the right side, there's a linear view which is brought up when, whenever you want to zoom into the chromosome or subchromosomal level and you're able to pan and, and zoom through the data. And then uh, you can see on, on there, there's a pop-up and it, you, from there you can look at the data specifically or link out to other tools like the UCSC genome browser. And there's uh, another one, in this case, all pair significance. And in this case, you can see the hovering uh, bars would show more information. They can actually be brought up and pinned to the screen, uh, you know, set off to the side so that you can sort of collect your data together and come back and look at it later. Uh, and finally, we have the network view, which uh, Brady is, has a poster in the hall speaking more about. But in this case, um, we're talking about bringing together many different kinds of associations, whether that's from protein domain mapping or the mining of Medline or random forest and many other things. And this is going to be more closely integrated with the entire tool set very soon. But the idea is that um, the circular view is not ideal for many types of data. And, and often what you really are trying to get at is the network, the topology of the of the graph itself. Um, and, and, and that will be built up along with, uh, I mentioned the graph computation. Earlier we're going to, when our analyses in, on graph computation become more sophisticated, uh, this tool is ideal for, for bringing in and, and reviewing those results. Um, so in the, in the future, or in the near future, uh, there's a, a couple of the things I talked about, the emerging technologies of graph databases and graph computation. And then uh, what I'm excited about is the network topologies and, and exploring the, uh, the, the very abstract topologies that can be created. And you can begin to use them to possibly identify explanatory variables 
and drive further analysis in, in the correct direction by, by overlaying these, these graphs outputs, whether they're cross-cancer or uh, cross-analysis and, and bringing in external information. Uh, but in a more concrete way, the, we plan on soon adding explicit retrievable state so that for any given screen that you've brought up and, and you're at this point in your analysis and you'd like to share that with the, with the colleague, it's important to be able to just share that to them, not send them a directions about where to click and how. And that'll be a, just a URL-based link. And also, of course, user data import is very, very important being able to bring in your own data and, and look at it in the context of other analyses uh, or just simply for the usage of the tool and the benefits that it provides. Uh, so the, the, the website is up, the explorer.cancerregulum.org. The, the tool is open source, uh, hosted on Google code, both the Regulum Explorer itself and the underlying uh, rendering tools that create the visualizations that you saw. Um, and, you know, we're always looking for more and more people to, to use it and give us feedback or even work on it with us, and it's uh, very exciting for us. So uh, I'd like to thank or acknowledge uh, Ilya, and then uh, myself and Jake worked on the Genome View. The network view is Andrea Eakin and Brady Bernard, and the analysis it was done by Vesson Thorsten, Sheila Reynolds, and Timo Erkela. I won't go into all the acknowledgments, but there's some, a list of some of the technologies that we've uh, leveraged so far in, in creating these kinds of tools and uh, our funding and so forth is at the bottom. Thank you. Any questions? Well, you probably are not expecting a question from me, Dick, but uh, I'd, I'd like to ask, and I get this asked a lot um, from people, can people ask, can I load my own data into yeah. Regulome Explorer? So do you see that uh, being, uh, how, how do you see that happening, that somebody would upload a data set, or would, would that be, if it's a very large data set, you would, presumably you would have to, you know, not move it, but do it close to the data then? Right, so, so that kind of comes back to, uh, concrete and formalized data specification, which we're pretty much at at this point. And so if they wanted to match our format, then yes, we could provide some sort of either upload or be able to retrieve the data from them and display it. Um, but if it's uh, a different abstraction on the data, a different data model, then it's also possible to take the tool, the code, underlying code itself and modify it quickly and, and provide it from their own side next to their data where, where it lives. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No questions. Okay, if not, thanks again. Thank and you. I'd like to thank all the speakers of this session.